Hi guys, once again welcome back to the Gatekeepers TV, of course your number one podcast channel dealing with sports, education and entertainment. Uh, welcome to Premier League Match Week 28 guys, it's official, yes, uh, I'm back again to give you the previews and of course the predictions on the matches. So before we jump to Match Week 28, allow me to bring to you first of all uh, the results or the highlights for Match Week 27. In Match Week 27 we had a big match, we had Man City playing Manchester United. In that match, of course, Manchester United started by scoring what a thunderbolt of a goal from Rashford. But that goal was cancelled by Foden. Foden scored a brace in that goal. And of course, your usual suspect, Alan Haaland, was able to score. The match ended in, of course, uh, 3-1. We saw West Ham continuing with their win. Of course, now it's two in a row. They won against Everton by three goals to one. Uh, Liverpool, after being disturbed or after being... Uh, after a difficult game against Nottingham Forest, Darwin Nunes managed to give them a winner in the late, 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 late extra time. Tottenham Hotspurs came from behind and won by three goals to one. On the other side, Aston Villa still continue with their win. Watkins was on the score sheet. They won by three goals to two. Fulham was able to surprise us by winning against Brighton by three goals to nil. Arsenal, 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 these guys, they, they are still scoring crazy goals. They were able to win their match on Monday against Sheffield United. Within the first half, they had actually completed the game. They had already scored five goals. So the game ended 6-0, uh, courtesy of Arsenal winning and maintaining the top three, or position three on the Premier League table. So, yes, on your screen, those are the results. You can just appreciate them, guys. And, again, before we jump to Match Week 28, we had the Champions League, guys. On your screen, once again, you can appreciate uh, the games which have been played. And, of course, by now, four teams have been able to qualify to the quarterfinals. Of course, this is Bayern Munich, this is PSG, this is uh, Man City. And, uh, of course, as you can see on your screen. So, good job. Congratulations to the teams so far. So, we saw Mbappe shining. We saw so Hurricane shining for, of course, for PSG, uh, for Bayern Munich. Uh, on the other side, we saw Haaland, Alvarez, uh, of course, on the, and Ake on the score sheet for Man City against Copenhagen. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. So, big up. Champions League also progressing. So, straight to it. Match week 28. In this match week 28 also, we have a match of the week, match of the weekend, which will, of course, be... Number one versus number two. Liverpool will be welcoming Man City at Anfield. Just relax, I'll be bringing that to you. So let's start with an early kickoff in this fixture. Early kickoff, of course, guys, will be Manchester United versus Everton. Manchester United are coming into this match having lost two matches in a row, same to Everton. Manchester United, uh, of course, we all know uh, they lost their first match in match week 26 also in match week 27 to man city so i feel like they feel like this is the time for them to actually make a comeback they will be of course at old Trafford, welcoming everton everton a team that plays well but results of late are not coming but uh, i feel like it's gonna be a competitive game manchester united loves winning against everton and of course antonio martial martial loves scoring against everton the issue i think uh, everton will be lucky considering that martial maybe is is still not fit to feature in this game but it is what it is so in this match it's gonna be a difficult match Rashford seems to be a boy back on form Hodgland uh, nearing to come back he missed the match against uh, Man City but he's almost there uh, McTominay is of course fit to play Hodgland Hodgland of course as I've told you Ganacho so Bruno Fernandes uh, they played well against City, though they couldn't hold the fort because City were crazy. But on the other side, Everton also were able to once again bungle an opportunity to win against West Ham. They lost by three goals to one. So let's see, two teams who lost in match 27, can they bring something fresh in match 28? In this match, I know we have a bad history against early kickoff whereby teams playing in early kickoff the lesser team are the ones who usually wins but in this one I feel like Manchester United have a point to prove so I'm giving them a chance to win by one nil. Bonamouth will be facing uh, Sheffield United. Huh? Bonamouth has a double ban Bonamouth and Muton have a double game week in this fixture by the way. So the first match of Bonamouth they will be facing Sheffield United. Bonamouth are coming into this game guys especially after winning by two goals to nil to nil against Burnley and of course on the other side Sheffield United were beaten six goals to nil with Arsenal so the question is can this relegation battle uh, be fought in a good way do you think 
Sheffield can be able to bring a comeback after the embarrassing 6-0? If you ask me, I don't think so. I feel like Bonamoth will continue with their win in this game. So I'm giving Bonamoth to win by two goals to nil. Crystal Palace will come in return. Crystal Palace were able to score first in their match in match 27 against, uh, of course, against Tottenham. They were not able to hold it to the end. Uh, Tottenham came from behind and won that match by three goals to one. On the other side, Luton, as I've told you, Luton, they lost 2-3 or 3-2 to Aston Villa. So the two teams who lost as they meet, uh, I think this is going to be a crazy fix. It's going to be a fixture which is worth watching. On this one, guys, I'm going with a 2-2 draw. So it's going to be a tough match. I'm going with a 2-2 draw because both teams have good uh, attackers who can score. Morris on uh, on Luton's side seems not to stop scoring. Uh, Doty, Doty is crazy playing as a wing back playing very well on the other side when you look uh, when you look at Crystal Palace uh, people like Olise they are playing very 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 well and easy so i've told you to to so wolves as they will be facing fulham this is a great game wolves are coming into this game guys uh, having lost uh, they lost to newcastle by three goals to nil guys on the other side Fulham were able to win by three goals to nil against Brighton. So if the two teams meet, I feel like Fulham is a team on the rise. They are in a, enjoying a... Excuse me, guys. Ah, I'm a champion. So, uh, Fulham. Fulham are enjoying a good form of their lifetime. So I feel like uh, they have won two games in a row. So on this one, they won against Manchester United. Now they won against uh, Brighton. So they're going to face Wolves. So I feel like it's an opportunity for them again to continue with their good form. So I'm going with Fulham to be able to win by 2-1. Yes. So Arsenal versus Brentford. Of course, this is a London derby. We all know London derby derbies always serve us with a lot of magic. So the last match, this will be the last match on Saturday. So as Arsenal will be facing Brentford, Arsenal by now are scoring tons and loads of goals because uh, their attacker seems to be enjoying a better form. They won by six goals to need in their last match in match 27. So as they're going to come to face Brentford, a Brentford a team that drew with Chelsea by 2-2. So I feel like uh, it's going to be a tough one. For me, I'm still going to bank on Arsenal to continue with their route. Arsenal have a good form and in fact now that they are looking at it in a different way they have an opportunity to go on top of the table if they win on if they win uh, this match they will be going on top of the table and regardless of whatever happens in the match against uh, Liverpool and Man City they will at least have climbed the table if they win this match so the more reason as to why Ateta boys needs to win Timba is back in training, of course, and of course, let me not talk about even the defense of Arsenal. They are doing everything great. When you talk of Saliba, when you talk of Gabriel, when you talk of Ben White, these people are all amazing. Tomiyasu just signed or extended his contract with Arsenal. Uh, in the midfield, Odegaard tends to be doing amazing things. The latest combination with Jorginho is actually giving Declan Rice an opportunity to actually uh, go forward and be able to convert or attack. And uh, we saw that he's been scoring of late and it's impressive. On the other, on the flanks, we have Saka, we have uh, Martinelli, and of course we have now Kai Havers. The boys are on form. On the bench, you have people like Trossard who can come and be a different boss. Arsenal is just a team on form. Even Tony's side, not to undermine them, they're also a good team. When you look at Tony, when you look at Wisa, when you look at Jensen, this is a holistic team which plays very well, and if you don't if you're not careful, they will be able to haunt you. Arsenal, Arsenal knows very well about this, considering that they have lost like, to Brentford sometimes back. Uh, so Arsenal will be coming into this match very careful. So I'm giving Arsenal to win this game by four goals to one. Yeah, four one, not clean sheet in this. On Sunday, we have Aston Villa facing Spurs. These two teams, position four and five, so they are competing for top four. So I feel like Aston Villa currently, they have not stabilized. On the other side, Spurs also have not stabilized. Uh, <clears throat> of course, Spurs will still be missing the, the services of one Richarlison, uh, who has been out for, he will be out for the next maybe two weeks. Uh, but not with that notwithstanding, they still have the likes of Son, Kulusovski, Brennan Johnson, and uh, the entire team who can actually bring a lot or effect a lot of changes. On the other side, uh, we have 
Aston Villa with players such as Oli Watkins, with players such as they have crazy, crazy, crazy players who can actually effect a lot of changes in them. So this is a match whereby I'm looking at it as a very competitive game. It's also a match to watch for this weekend because it's gonna be full of adrenaline. So this is a match whereby I feel like um, I'm going with a. I'm tempted to go with a draw, but I feel like Tottenham might cause an upset. I'm going with a 2-1 win for Tottenham. Uh, Brighton versus Nottingham Forest. Uh, Nottingham Forest lost narrowly to Liverpool by one goal to nil. Brighton lost to Fulham by three goals to nil. As the two teams are going to meet, I feel like Brighton needs at least to come to make a comeback. So this is going to be difficult, but not. It's going to be interesting, but not easy. So I'm going with a 2-2 draw here. So it's going to be a draw here. Uh, West Ham versus Burnley. West Ham seems to have found their scoring foot. Uh, we all remember they won against Wolves, and uh, also they came and won against Everton. Four goals, three goals. They have scored seven goals in three in two games. So that means that they are finding their scoring prowess. Uh, Bowen seems to be a guy who's coming back swiftly and well. So as the two teams are going to meet, Burnley, a team that has not been performing very well and they're actually on the brink of relegation, I feel like I'm going to favor West Ham, the Hammers, to be able to win at home. So give them another 3-1 win. Uh, then, uh, of course, um, we have the match of the day. Liverpool versus Man City. Liverpool versus Man City. Guys, uh, Liverpool are currently position one on top of the table. Uh, Man City are position two on the table. Uh, Liverpool are coming into this match after winning in match week 27 by a goal to nil against Nottingham. Man City are coming to this game after winning uh, 3-1 against Manchester United. Uh, Man, uh, Man City are also coming into this game having qualified to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, having won against Copenhagen by three goals to one and qualified with an aggregate of 6-2. So, and of course, notwithstanding Foden and Alvarez and Haaland are boys on form and they can't stop scoring. So, as the two teams are going to meet, guys, as you can see on your screen, those are the stats. The past 11 games that this people have played, it's been interesting. The last match which they played, of course, we all remember, it, it ended in a draw. The match was played at Etihad. Man City played uh, Liverpool a very electrifying game. We all remember uh, Mohamed Salah's assist to Trent Alexander-Arnold who scored the equaliser in this match. And also in this match, just to mention, Haaland was on the score sheet with an assist from I think was it Aki or Akanji, one of them, but Haaland was on the score sheet in this match. So this is a game whereby two friends, two coaches, this is Pep Guardiola and Jorgen Klopp, will be meeting. I don't know whether it will be the last dance when the two team, the two coaches will be meeting in the Premier League. It might be the last dance. So as they will be facing each other in this last dance, my biggest question to you viewers is, who do you think is, who do you think is going to have the last laugh? Will it be Pep Guardiola? Or will it be Jagan Klopp? Jagan Klopp will be at home. Remember, this is his last season in Premier League, as he had officially announced. So he wants to leave Premier League at least with his heads high. And uh, I feel like uh, for that to be maintained, he has to start that by actually winning against Man City at Anfield. We all know the atmosphere of Anfield, how it gets. Anfield never rests. Anfield is a place where everybody is always afraid to go and grab points because the crowd is always electrifying, especially with Klopp psyching it up. So, uh, this is a match whereby, guys, I feel like the two teams are going to meet each other at their best. Uh, Liverpool, of course, have a list of injuries, by the way. Players like Trent Alexander-Arnold being out, Mohamed Sada has, has been out, but we saw him in the Europa League. We saw him in Europa League, at least he's back. That is good news because we all know how Salah loves playing against, um, against Man City. Uh, people like Jota will be missing, but that notwithstanding, I feel like Klopp by now has confirmed to us that he can introduce his young boys and they can be equal to the task and they can be able to, to do uh, magic to, to the team. On the other side, you find that Man City, Man City players are back, uh, apart from Grealish, who is still injured, but you find that people like Haaland is back, uh, De Bruyne is back, uh, my friend. So Doku, player like Doku, Alvarez, the entire combination, Bernardo Silva, is back. So the only issue which I have with currently Man City is their defense. They have a leaking defense which they need to work 
on, especially as they, uh, now that they're going to face Liverpool, a team that is attack-minded, they really need to work on their defence. So, if we talk defensively between the two teams, which team do I feel has the best defence? Currently, if you ask me, I feel like Liverpool are the most defensive. They, they have a good defence. Uh, that defence of Van Dijk, of course, and Canote as the centre-backs, it's a, it's, a, it's a good one. And, of course, the replacement for Trent Alexander-Arnold, that young man, guys, he's doing everything. Bradley, Bradley is doing everything correct, so I like him. When you go to Man City, you find that Man City defence being led by the likes of Akia Kanji, uh, the like of... Uh, it's, 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 it's a defence which is not... It, it's a little bit shaky, but uh, you don't undermine them because they can always be good. So Ederson versus Alisson, the two Brazilian goalkeepers also are going to face it off again. So who do you favour? So, I think having said that, statistically we know Liverpool has won more matches than uh, Liverpool, than Man City, but overall in the current generation, the generation it f sounds like Man City have, uh, have had a lot of wins. Uh, we saw Trent Alexander-Arnold saying that, uh, I don't know whether it was a shot which he was throwing, he was saying that for them winning this match will be more important. Winning their trophies makes more sense than trophies for Man City, especially considering that they have been struggling in terms of finances. I don't know what's your take on that, but that was Trent Alexander-Arnold for you. So, as they are going to face each other in this game guys straight to it without even boring you i feel like tactically Klopp is prepared and is ready for this match on the other side um, of course mr pep is also prepared to face his opponent in this it's not going to be an easy one considering that the person who wins this uh, whoever wins it goes on top of the table uh, so it's going to be a tough one so straight to it if i'm going to give you my straight up thoughts on this i feel like um, anfield will be anfield uh, these matches can easily end in a draw, but I feel like it's going to be a Liverpool moment. So give it a 3-2 win. Yes, it's going to be a high-scoring game. 3-2 win for Liverpool. And if Salah will be playing in this match, count him in. Count Haaland in. So yes, 3-2 win for Liverpool. All right. Yeah, that's it. I said it. So on Monday, we have Chelsea versus Newcastle. The last match which these two teams played... <coughs> Newcastle were able to blow Chelsea away. Newcastle won by four goals to one, and uh, it was a crazy one. So I hope that Chelsea will be coming for a revenge now that they will be at Stamford Bridge. They need to work on their defence. Yes, I'm talking once again about the defence of Chelsea. It's a crazy defence, a leaking defence. These people need to be serious with their defence. They need to work on it and they make, need to make it solid. So if they're going to make meet Newcastle a team that won in match with 27 by three goals to nil, uh, and Chelsea a team that drew to Brentford by two goals to two, so the two teams, in terms of scoring, both teams can score. The issue now is on the defence. Both teams don't have a good defence. So the person who will be more solid uh, at the back, that's the team that's going to win for you. So in this game, I know it's going to be hard, but I feel like Chelsea might be coming back uh, for their revenge. A narrow win of 2-1. Uh, then the last match will be on Wednesday in this match week 28. I, I told you it was a double game with Luton versus Bonamoth. Bonamoth will be at home welcoming Luton. In this fixture, guys, I feel like Luton are going to grab a win. So give Luton a chance to win by 2-1 away. Yes, that's it, guys. Thank you, guys, for keeping in the Gatekeepers TV, of course. Thank you for always tuning in. Remember to subscribe and share our content across board. Otherwise, guys, until next time, guys, let's enjoy football and let's make the world a better place to be.